Today we're going to be talking about VM Direct Path. This is a new technology that's offered within vSphere. It allows guest operating systems to have direct access to I.O. devices, thus bypassing the virtualization layer. On the screen here we're looking at Cisco UCS. Actually, I have access into a uh, Cisco Blade. Uh, what we're looking at here is the advanced BIOS configuration. Specifically, we need to have support for VT for directed I.O. This is associated with an Inhalum processor. If you don't have this, uh, dir uh, VM Direct Path will just simply not work. We're uh, booting up our ESX host here. And in a moment, we're going to log in and look at the configuration settings associated with VM Direct Path. Before we do that, let's take a quick summary at the server we're accessing. We've got uh, eight CPUs, a multi-core with uh, 16 logical processors, and uh, multiple uh, gigabit Ethernet interfaces here. Specifically, we have uh, the supported Intel 10 gig adapter, and uh, you can see that I have VMNIC 1 and VMNIC 0 configured. In, uh, in this particular uh, demo, I'm actually going to be connecting up to VMNIC, uh, VMNIC 1 rather, and uh, associating that with a given guest. And as you can see, it's already associated with vSwitch 1. It's giving me an error. Um, we're going to, uh, once we uh, select that we want to utilize that particular interface, it's going to prompt us uh, through this message to reboot the physical server. A reboot, a reboot is required um, most times uh, to enable this functionality. So we'll just uh, reboot the host. And now post reboot, uh, we're going to connect back in and access a uh, the configuration that's associated with a VM Direct Path. Go back into that setting, and then um, pair that up specifically uh, with a VM that I've already pre-configured. So let's go to the configuration. Go back to Advanced Settings, and we're going to go select that interface that's been associated with the Direct Path configuration. Note that it is the Intel 10 gig uh, dual port interface. And there are a few interfaces that are supported today. Uh, the Intel 10 gig card is one of them. Let's go into the actual guest. It's a Windows 2003 host. We're going to actually add that PCI interface. So let's select PCI device. And it's going to present us with the option. That's the only option available is that uh, 10 gig Intel card. So we'll select that, say next, and from this point forward, that 10 gig interface will be exclusively managed and owned by this particular VM. ESX itself doesn't even have um, direct connectivity to it. It's associated with that VM. One thing we do need to do is go into the um, VMX file of this particular guest and edit the sketch mem min size. This is the uh, um, um, basically the minimum size of memory it's associated with the VM. It needs to, this particular setting needs to match uh, what you've allocated uh, within the VM's configuration. This is specific to Direct Path IO, uh, and if you do not change that, you will, you'll get an error when you try to uh, start up the VM. So let's look into the guests, uh, log in, and we'll go into manage within this particular host and look at its devices and see that we have a new Ethernet controller. So what we need to do is install the 10 gig uh, drivers for Mintel. Install, install those into the actual guest. And in a moment, we'll be able to go into networking configuration and see that we have a new 10 gig adapter within this particular system. So if we double click on it, we can look at it. It's acquiring address. In a moment, it'll be online. And we'll have the ability to use that system. In fact, I'll even uh, disable the 1 gig that's associated with the guest and now we're exclusively running on this 10 gig adapter. If we look at back at the networking tab under configuration for the ESX host, you'll notice there's no longer that 10 gig adapter associated with vSwitch 1 and you'll notice that VMNIC, VMNIC 1 is completely gone from the configuration. Um, this Windows guest is actually managing that 10 gig interface and owns it exclusively at this point. So uh, one of the examples, probably most prevalent use cases, is where we might want to present storage and allow this particular interface uh, exclusive access to that storage, as well as um, for, for higher throughput type applications, we might require a dedicated uh, network interface or de dedicated HBA. We're going to go into our disk management, discover a target that's been presented to this particular host, 
attach it, um, give it a drive, and let's connect to it and present it with some I.O. That ends our demo for VM Direct Path. Hope you enjoyed it.